review for you! So, we have been waiting for Sherlock to start series three for two years, and we get all three episodes in under two weeks, and then it's gone again. Let's talk about The Empty Hearse. <laughs> I didn't get to see it till a couple days after everyone else saw it, because I wanted to watch it with Adrian, and then we, our schedules were like unmixy things. By the time I saw it, I had unfortunately seen a couple spoilers. I thought that might ruin it. Not even kind of. A couple of the things that I really want to talk about are Mary. I want to talk about what happened really when Sherlock died. And I want to talk about who the hell is after John. So I've read a couple of the books. I haven't read as many as some people. I know that Adrian has read all of them. He recently finished his entire complete works of, Sher of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Um, and so he knows like everything about the stories, all the stories all the time. I know vague some stuff, you know, but I do know that John and Mary are married. That's a thing that I just kind of understand as a given. And so when the Sherlock fandom on the internet before the episode aired, was so like anti-Mary it really freaked me out because I was like yes I kind of ship John Locke I'm not ashamed of that I love them as a bromance I think they're super adorable I think that they're a great team and a great friendship but I wasn't afraid that like Mary was gonna change that because the dynamic works just fine in the book so why wouldn't it work in the show but some people who maybe haven't read the books or are just sort of really hardcore shippers which is fine, I'm not trying to get up anybody's butt about this, um, we're like, she's gonna ruin the dynamic and she's gonna tear everything apart and blah blah blah, which fortunately for everyone involved was not the case. Miss Abington was incredible. The friendship between her and Sherlock are, is so comfortable and easy and fun and she's so sassy and she doesn't let John be like this broody thing and she doesn't let Sherlock ruffle her like even a little bit which I think is great and she was like I like him and everyone went nobody likes him even John doesn't like him half the time but she's such a good person and such a good energy to have around these guys that like she's like I like him I get it um and I just thought that she played that part with such real sweetness and that's something that they need that they needed also fun bonus that they were like that they're sweeties in real life which i think is great so show opens with this ludicrous albeit very sexy idea of what happened the sherlock molly hooper kiss let's be real the single sexiest moment of the entire episode he just comes into the window and he ruffles his coat and fixes his hair and just lays one on her and it was just amazing. It was also a giveaway that that was not what happened <laughs> because I'm trying to imagine Sherlock kissing someone and it actually makes my brain snap. But I love that like we open with this theory and poor Anderson who is having some kind of horrible breakdown is like trying to decide what happened and all this stuff and then we cut towards the end where Sherlock is telling him in great detail what happened. And if you remember back in series one, not one, two, one or two, he says straight up, lies contain too much detail. The truth is always simple. And so, like, I think that's a giveaway that he was lying to Anderson and we still don't know what happened. We still don't know what happened. I have no idea and I want to know and I have this horrible feeling they're not going to tell us in the next episode and we're not going to find out till series four if it even ever happens. And while I think it's plausible what happened, I think there's discrepancies visually in what happened at the end of the Reichenbach fall and the beginning of the Empty Hearse that I don't think the production team would would screw up. You know, like the way his face looked when he fell or just like any of that stuff and just like little little details that I have have me sort of going maybe that's not what happened you know the other thing that really freaks me out 
is that John was kidnapped. He was kidnapped, just straight up off the street, kidnapped, and thrown into a freaking bonfire. I'm not familiar with villains in the Sherlock novels, so I don't really know what's going to happen. I watched the preview for the third episode today, and I'm still like, what? Who is this person? But we have absolutely no idea in this episode who could possibly want John Watson, one of the nicest human beings on the earth. Who would want them? Who would want him dead? And is this happening because Sherlock is back? Is Sherlock doing something that's putting John and Mary in danger? Like, when isn't he, right? But I just, I'm so anxious about that. And I guess we'll just have to see what happens. Like, I guess it'll unfold however it's going to unfold. But, uh, yeah, that's something that I'm really concernicus about. There's a lot of people online saying um, that <laughs> Gaddis and Moffat got their plot lines for this series uh, from Tumblr. <laughs> and... <laughs> While some of the little little beats I recognize from the internet, I think I can safely say, while bits of it kind of read like a really well-written fanfiction, it was really awesome and all on its own without, without tying it to the internet as a source. I think it was cool the way they used people, like real people, in Anderson's little club of like, Sherlock Lives, which is cool, like that girl who <laughs> uh, like that girl who shipped Sherry Artie, which is hilarious because, you know, just it is. And Anderson was like, that's crap! But we got the like near kiss between Sherlock and Moriarty and people were like, pandering! That is pandering! And it kind of, it kind of was. But it was funny because it was sort of self-referential, which I thought was classy. Everything, the whole episode was so beautiful, and I am, for one, very, very excited to see what happens next.